Hey everyone, it's Amy with Mighty, and today I'm going to walk you through how to use Mighty. So if you aren't familiar, Mighty is a Google Chrome extension we created for Articulate Rise. And as much as we have loved using Articulate Rise, we've just felt like sometimes we wanted a little more flexibility, we wanted a little more creative control over some of the things that uh, we felt were a little more limiting. So right now I'm at maestrolearning.com slash mighty. And we do offer a 30 day free trial. And in order to get started, which you can see I already have it installed, it would bring you something, bring you to something like this with a form that you would fill out and then you would simply add it to Chrome. All right, so I have jumped over to the Rise course example and you will know that we have Mighty installed because of our Mighty Assistant down here at the bottom. What's really great about this is you can jump to some of the important things that you need. So manage your account. We have an awesome help center, a really fantastic community. Um, we love chatting with you through there and we get lots of good feedback and uh, feature requests inside of there, um, as well as report any bugs that you may come across. So really Mighty is broken up into Mighty Blocks, which elevate your learning content because they are brand new blocks that don't exist in RISE. And then as you can see here, we have these little dashes and these are Mighty Mods. So anything in your block library that has a little dash you can kind of get a hint that, okay, this numbered list is gonna have a mod. And those are modifications to existing blocks. All right, so we are going to start with this intro section here. So we have a subheading um, or an eyebrow as we'd like to call it, this large heading and then the body content underneath. So this section right here, um, if we start with a heading, this is set to rises max of 52, which, you know, sometimes we want it to be a little bit bigger. It just, it feels small in proportion to like some of the other things that we have going on. So with Mighty, you can actually adjust it all the way up to 420. Um, that would be kind of crazy here with the amount of letters in each word. So I think for this case, let's do 108. And we also can adjust the line height. So as you uh, update the size of text in different areas, you can make that a little bit tighter so it feels a little bit better. So I did 1.1 and then that way it just helps the eye go right to that heading first and then this subheading next, which I'm about to tackle. So obviously the subheading is set to uh, the heading font that we set originally in the course. Um, and what's great about Mighty is we can now add in any additional font that we'd like. So this is pulling from my library of fonts that I've ever uploaded in the past, as well as Rise's default fonts. And I'm still not gonna go crazy and put in like 10 different fonts throughout this, but I want to add in just like a third font to help balance and support everything else. So I think I'm gonna change that to Gotham Medium. It's kind of big, so I want to reduce the size of that. And then what's also really cool is we have letter spacing and um, this like really helps kind of balance this and can really help with readability. So if I were to space it out to two and then with our custom color picker quickly grab that gold, that sets it apart. It just really adds that importance where we need it to. As I scroll down, I feel like this is a good opportunity for a transition. So a lot, of, a lot of times with transitions, the content might be changing and we just want like a, a simple visual cue um, that kind of lets the learner know that some of the content is changing. And with Rise, you know, you can change the color of the background, but you start to get like this banded, very like blocky look throughout. So we've always created our own transitions. And in the past, you know, we've used different hacks and things with like labeled graphics that we have shared out and about, but we wanted to show you how easy it is to add in a mighty transition now. So you kind of saw how that worked, but I literally put in my new transition and then under edit here, we have these different shape presets, which is really great. 
you can adjust a lot of the settings. I won't really get into that now. It's fun to kind of play with. But what I really love about this transition is the ability to inherit the background automatically. So what that means is it's automatically going to take the color from above and below the block um, that you just put in. So right now, if I toggle it on, it's grabbing this like kind of creamy color and then the white above and I've created a, tr a transition all within Rise very quickly within about three clicks. Um, if you're familiar with Rise, you know that numbered lists can be a nice use case for a lot of things. Um, however, this bullet color always takes on the theme color. So there's been times like if this background was like a charcoal or something, that number here would not really pop the way that we want it to. But what's great about Mighty is we have the ability to adjust that. So I'm going to work with my numbered list Mighty Mod. And as you can see here, everything is already set. So we have our numbered circle color. But if I wanted to, I could really change that color, adjust it, make it, you know, a little more subtle if I wanted to. I can also adjust the number color so I can change that to black. We also can adjust the margin size. So small, medium, large, I believe they're already set at large and there's just times where we want it a little bit closer. And then same with the bullet size. Sometimes it's just a little too big for what we want. So we can do small, medium, which I'm gonna change it to medium or large. And then we can also change out the number type. So right now it's set to numbers lowercase, uppercase letters, and then Roman numerals. I'll just go ahead and change it there. I'm actually gonna duplicate this and bump this down. And the reason why I'm doing that is because let's say we broke this numbered list up into two. So for instance, we have A, B, some content that really makes sense to go with B here. I want to continue this list. So I'm going to delete out these two things really quick. And you'll see it does reset itself. But we can continue from the previous list and it should automatically update. So it's A, B, C, D now. Um, we love this because not only are we able to like break up really long lists and bring in some interaction and some new blocks, but um, obviously with like being able to adjust this margin and the size and the color, it's allowed us to use our numbered lists a little more wisely. Before I move forward, I just have to adjust that padding. So there we go. That's one of our mods that I wanted to walk you through. Next, we have this video here, which I really only have it in here to add some movement into the course. And what I'm first gonna do that's a little bit unrelated is change it to full width. And now with our Mighty Mod, we can toggle on autoplay. So as I scroll up and scroll down, it's starting and having this like really high quality movement throughout the course, which we used to create GIFs. And I think those work, but in this case, we want it to be really nice quality. And it does that as it enters into the viewing uh, screen. All right, next we are going to focus on our reflections. <clears throat> so in the past with Rise, there's been times where we've wanted to create a reflection prompt where we would tell the learner to go grab a piece of paper, open up notes on your computer, write down your response to this question. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times learners weren't doing this, which, you know, if there's really no way to check it, they just felt like it was something they could skip through. So we've made it super duper easy where we now have the mighty block reflection that already adds us in. So let me quickly just match this background so it feels a little bit more seamless. And then I will show you the edit settings. I just copied this. So this is where I can put in my prompt, which is very similar to the above. Again, now with all of the mighty updates, we can adjust the look of this as well. Um, we can add additional questions to this. We can also add hint text. So type your response. Oh my gosh, I can't spell. Type your response here. Okay. 
We can even adjust the button and what it says. So um, print, I don't really want it to, I, I'll, I'll just keep it. Okay, download. And then what's really cool about this is we now have the ability to allow the learner to download their responses as a PDF. So if they wanted to download it and then maybe they email it to their leader, or if you are using SCORM 2004 in the LMS, you can actually see their reflection answers. So that's a really cool win. I think it's a great way to kind of keep your learners in check and just making sure that they're really into what they're learning and they're kind of engaging in as much as possible. Next, we're gonna work on this continue button. So another mod we have is obviously continue buttons, the color of them take on the theme of um, what you set originally in your course. So for instance, if I wanted this black button to sit on this really dark background color, uh, you can barely see it. So with Mighty Mods, we have a couple ways to customize it. So I'm going to show you quickly the button color, changing that. Um, I could really pull any color I want in. I'll just, you know, change it to pink just to show you the difference. And then you can also adjust the color of the text. You can add a border if you want to, which right now you can't see it because it is set to black. Uh, there's kind of a blue so you can see the difference. Um, and then you can also add a drop shadow. But what's really cool about this is we can make this match. So a lot of times the buttons within the, the course or throughout the course are rounded. So this can match and stay a little bit more on brand. And then you can even adjust the size of it and the spacing. So pretty cool. We're gonna keep on rolling down to this bulleted list. And I think bulleted lists are totally fine to have, but I wanted to use this opportunity to show you how you could take a prompt like this and a list and change it into something a little more interactive. So for Mighty, we have created a reverse hotspot. So it's essentially the opposite of a labeled graphic within Rise. So in the author view, you can replace the image and then we're going to place these hot spots, hot spots on different areas that you want your learner to identify in the graphic or the image. So as I click around, you can see I can drag the click target wherever I want, or you can use these sliders as well. You can also adjust the corner radius. Um, but for now, let me just put it over this apple here, kind of give it a little bit of a space around it. And then I can put my little feedback in there. I'm also going to put it on this coffee and you can kind of see how these overlap. So it's like, oh, I better, oops, I better change the size of this. Um, otherwise people may click on the wrong thing. Snacks, and then let's add one more. I'm going to reduce that and add in whiteboard, close. Either in the edit view that I just was in or in here, you can put in your prompt. With our rich text editor, you could really do anything you want with this um, to make it look the way that you want it to. Otherwise, I'm going to change the background color. And from a learner standpoint, I'm clicking around, okay, what makes a good collaborative environment? A whiteboard, uh, oh, that should say coffee, and then snacks. And you see I had three of three and I've completed it and I'm moving forward. A couple more of my favorites are the mods for the scenario and the process that are super fun to show you. And they really just involve like one or two clicks. So with process blocks, we have a hard time using them sometimes because of this step label that sits up at the top. We can never move them, which is really great. So you can use the process block for other things than feeling like you're stuck 
by using that label here at the top. So that's an easy win. And then similarly with the scenario, we have the ability to hide the character throughout the dialogues as well as removing the background blur. And the reason we want to remove that background blur is because we still don't have the ability to upload our own characters. But for instance, if I knew that I had a scenario and I wanted to put my own person in or a character, I could build them right into the image in the background and it doesn't blur it out. And so you could kind of feel like it's built right inside of it. And I want to show one more fun trick here at the top. So if I preview this, oops, it kind of just jumps you in, which is what we want. But I thought it would be nice to add in a really cool transition. So with Mighty Blocks, I'm going to add in a transition and it disappears because it has that um, inherit background toggle on, which is fine, but I want to show you something really interesting. So if I were to change this to more of an arc, which again, it's hard to see right now, I'm actually going to add in a divider spacer. And then I'm going to use Rise's new, newer image background to mask out an image. So let me upload the image I created. I'm going to get rid of that overlay here. And then with the spacer, I'm going to increase the padding so it gets more of that. And then you can see how that mighty transition just instantly cropped it how I wanted to. And that works with all these presets. So it's really, really cool. When I preview it, it's like this beautiful header image that grabs your attention as you continue to scroll down. So those are just some of our incredible mighty features that we have to offer. Again, we did not cover every single one today, but we have tons of resources, videos that kind of go over all the individual features one by one. Uh, we love to hear any type of feedback, any questions, um, any feature requests that you may have to share with us. And we hope you enjoy it and happy designing.